open, Jack. Hey, Jenny. You are the end. I can't open it. Too bad, Karen. Darnie. All his nibs. Mr. Partridge. Hey, Mr. Partridge. Now what's the trouble? Can't open the blinking door. <laughs> You hear me? This is Victoria Station. Honey. Some drunk sleeping at all. Some just traveling for claws. <laughs> Jim, let's have your ladder. Yes, sir. Open that window. Lock. I can't budge it, Mr. Partridge. That is the word. You'll have to smash it, then. What? you go in a place like this alone? You must really. I'll be all right. Unfortunate death in a train of one of our members, Mr. James Murphy, who departed this life by his own act while of unsound mind, has necessitated this meeting. That's what you say, Mr. Mayhew. But how do you know? A verdict of death by suicide was returned tonight. This is the second occasion that we have been brought together by the uh, mishaps to our members. The first being the passing away by natural causes of the late Colonel Forrester, whose charming daughter so gracefully honors us with presence here tonight. It is agreed in the pact drawn up and formally attested to by its founders that should the Grim Reaper overtake uh, one or more, the interests of the deceased in the society will be divided equally among the surviving members. It is also provided for in the pact that Miss Forrester becomes a participating member. Consequently, the interests of the late James Murphy will be divided equally among the seven of us. I move that my fee for the necessary legal representation, funeral expenses and a modest urn for the ashes uh, be defrayed by our organization. I understand from the widow that uh, he expressed a preference for cremation. Hmm. I second that. All those in favor will please signify by raising their hands. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Baker. Mr. Deering. Mr. Pike. Ah, uh, yet. Good. Has any provision been made for the widow? No. I presume that we could stretch a point in her favor. Emphatically not. Things are complicated enough as they are. 
Why did he want to kill himself? Have you ever met his wife? No. No? Well, I have. A pest if there ever was one. He can attribute his death solely to the general deficiencies of one Annabelle Mary Murphy. What would you deduce from this? Obviously, an attempt to convey secret information. Could you decipher it? I could not, nor could you. Would you like to bet? Certainly. How much? Shilling. My time is too valuable. The answer will be found in a large book because the numbers are large. I'd suggest uh, the Bible. A client, Watson. Well, the widow standing under the street lamp. A widow? Would you like to bet on that? Of course. But I'm not going down the street to ask her. Ah. Won't be necessary. She's made up her mind. So you deduce at a distance, eh? Not in this case. I recognized her features. She's a Mrs. Murphy. Her husband was murdered three days ago. Do you mean the man that was found dead in a train? Exactly. Come in. A Mrs. Murphy to see you, sir. Mr. Owen found him such a man. Such a man. My husband up and died without leaving me as much as a threatening bit. It's a crying shame, Mr. Owen, but that's what it is. Sit down and try to compose yourself. Cut off without a farthing by an ungrateful good for nothing. Me, at my time of life. No dirty dog had a better wife. I waited on him and to mouth. Stood by his side morning, noon and night. And what does the sinker do? He ups and kills himself and, and leaves his money to, to a trust. And Mr. Mary do. Yes. And there's another thing, and if I never saw another, won't even let me have a sixpence. It won't even let me have anything, Mr. Owens. How do you smell it, you, the lawyer? Yes, the thieving arm, the dirty rat. One moment. You were married how long? Five blessed long years. Previous to your marriage, your husband served in the army. You knew him. I'll be. You got a discharge in China. Yes, that's right. Then you married. Yes, and I gave up everything, Mr. Holmes. You asked the proprietor of the Black Sow. you tell you. It was me that made that pub what it was. And your husband had money? Barrels of it. And when he wanted more, he used to come up to London and get it. It was that that took him to London when he killed himself. How do you know? Well, Jim comes into my room. I was in bed with a piece of cucumber rind round the head, trying to cure an headache. He had a letter in his hand. See ya, pig, he said. That was his pet name for me when he was drunk. I'm going up to London. Did you read the contents of the letter? Oh, it wasn't no letter. It was just a piece of doggerel. Watson, make a note of Mrs. Murphy's address. Uh, 232 King's Cross Road. Uh, then you'll undertake me, Mr. Holmes. I'll uh, take up your case. Uh, mind you, it'll have to be for love. Love? Well, Nick, I don't know how you like working for nothing. My interest is to bring the criminal to justice. Well, never mind about justice. Never mind about the crime. All I want is my husband's lawful money. And I want you to slap that thieving lawyer's face right across between his greasy fat chops. Good night, Mr. Holmes. I'll be seeing you and thank you kindly. Good night, Mrs. Murphy. Deep water, Watson. He needs some shady lawyer, not you. Think so? I'm amazed that you're wasting your energies on such a morbid trifle. Who is this merry dude? London's most dangerous crook. The king of blackmailers. A gliding, slidy, venomous snake. Once in his power, he'll squeeze and squeeze until he's drained his victims dry. More than once I've had my net around him, but so far he's managed to wriggle his way out. 
The time has come, Watson. The time has come for Mr. Thaddeus Meredith. And now, Miss Forrester and gentlemen, this concludes the meeting. I would like to have a word with you alone. I sincerely trust no further accidents will happen to occasion another meeting. Never can tell. Going my way. Which way do you go? I go the other. That leads to a dead end. That's the way I go. Good night, then. Good night. You must never mention anything that transpired at this meeting tonight or even that this meeting was held. I saw a young man standing on the corner as I came in. Yes, my fiancé. He brought me here and is waiting for me. Oh. Then you're thinking of being married? Yes. I wouldn't if I were you. That is, at least until you've consulted me. But why? I can't explain. In a short time, the society will no longer exist. Until its affairs are winded up, it would be most unwise for you to marry. Your father would not have wished it. What had my father to do with these people? Didn't he ever tell you? No. Then I must respect his silence. Remember, not a word to a living soul. He's after me. He's after me. Captain Pine. <coughs> oh! Oh! through the heart. You wait here. Thames at 5 a.m. in the Limehouse district. The autopsy shows that death was caused by a bullet through the heart. The features, as you see, are unrecognizable, caused possibly by the battering of the head against the wall where the body was found. The widow identified the body by means of that ring. Ah. A very rare and very beautiful ring, this tray. There isn't the slightest doubt that the deceased is Captain Pike. The clothes were identified, initials on the collar and on the shirt. Further identifications are contained in these letters that were found in the clothing. Where is the widow? We ask her to wait. She's in the adjoining room. My name is Sherlock Holmes. When did you last see your husband alive? We dined together last night at the Savoy Grill. He left me shortly after nine o'clock. I never saw him again. You're staying? At the Savoy. You've been in London how long? About a week. And you live where? At the Grange Sugar Nest. When your husband left you, did he inform you where he was going? No, but I fancied it was on a matter of business. He was a man very precise in his habits. When midnight came, and there was no sign of him, I became rather alarmed. Midnight would be a late hour for him. Very. As the time went on, I became more and more well. At last, I informed the police. An hour ago, I received a message to come here. 
where I identified the body of my poor husband. By the ring? Yes. Did he always wear a ring? That one, yes. I gave it to him when we were married. That would be? About six years ago in China. It is an heirloom belonging to my family and has been handed down through generations. I see. Permit me to express my sympathy for your great loss. Thank you. Is that all? By the way, should it become necessary, shall I communicate with you at the Grange or the Savoy? Through my lawyer. His name? Mr. Thaddeus Meridu. Good morning, Mr. Holmes. Unquestionably. Is that all? That's all I have to say. What do you think? I think that the lady is a liar. senseless and futile. There was no motive. No motive. Peer deep down in the black heart of Thaddeus Meridio and you'll find a motive. You don't mean to suggest that he had anything to do with it, do you? I suggest nothing. Come in. Inspector, it's strange to see you, sir. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson. What's the matter? You look worried. Worried? I'm up to my neck. Again? Before I can begin to finish one case, I'm plunged into another. That's the penalty of being smart. You came to see me professionally? Well, unofficially. I see. Head you win, tears I lose. There's been a bad business during the night. An old gentleman. You'll find it a bit of a puzzler. You mean you found it a bit of a puzzler? We've left everything in status quo, hoping your papers with an opinion. Dead? Hmm? Murder? Suicide. Come, Watson. Game is afoot. He was well known as a stamp collector. Hmm. Very interesting. What is it, Holmes? out of the garden. Tell them you to judge by the rusty hinges.
you can see that I have left everything untouched. If a herd of buffaloes had passed along, it couldn't be a greater mess. You can take a smoke. Thank you, sir. What do you think? There's been murder done. The murderer was a man. He was in the prime of life, six feet in height, has small feet, wears square-toed boots, limps slightly on the left foot and smokes Trichinopoly cigars. Well, if it was murder, how was it committed? The assassin was in the house before his victim arrived. He hid in the recess behind the window. While there, he smoked a cigar. He fired a shot which hit the victim on the back of the head and then dragged the body to where you found it. He left and returned some while later to fire a second shot, this time through the mouth. You'll find the mark of a boot clearly imprinted on the congealed blood. And what was his object? To obliterate the effect of the first, hoping by so doing to transfer the crime from that of murder to one of suicide. Bullet number one you will find in the wall on the farther side of the room. The other will be found embedded in the body of the murdered man. Come, Watson. We mustn't keep Mr. Merrydew waiting. Uh, Mr. Holmes is still waiting, sir. Uh, how long has it been now? Uh, fully two hours, sir. That's as it should be. You may show him in now. Very good, sir. Mr. Holmes, this is indeed a pleasure. Uh, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, but I had to adjust my lunch. This is my friend and partner, Dr. Watson. How do you do? That's a poor gentleman. Thank you, no. Mm. Cigar? Thank you. Uh, be seated, gentlemen. I represent Annabelle Mary Murphy. Charming lady, I'm empowered to act on her behalf. Congratulations. As you are doubtless aware, her husband came to a premature and sudden end. Yeah, yeah. My client is under an impression that certain monies belonging to the deceased are being unlawfully withheld from her. By whom? By you. And you believe this delightful lady? I'm paid to find out. Mm. An angry woman is hard to pacify. So I thought that an amicable discussion with you would put me in possession of certain facts with which I could prove to my client the absurdity of her claim. I see. Is that all? That is all. Dear, dear, you're not smoking my cigar. You refuse to assist me. My dear Mr. Holmes, I have neither the information nor the authority. You see, until a few days ago, I was not aware that your distinguished client existed. In my profession, I deal with many cases impartially and legally without coming into personal contact with my client. It won't do, Mr. Merritt. Anything else? May I trouble you for a pencil and paper? Help yourself. Mr. Busybody Hall. By the way, I think you should know that another client of yours met his death last night. Mr. Malcolm Deering, found murdered. Good day, Mr. Merritt. Come, Watson. Cold-blooded monster. Well, I've given him something to think about. Did you see what I saw? His feet. What about it? But they were small feet. And the boots. Well, well. It was square toed, square toed. Really? Yes. And, and did you remark the brand of cigar? Cigar? Trichinopoly. 
It was stenciled in big letters on the top of the box. Is that all you observed? Was there anything else? A hundred things. Among them, the cipher to the code. A large book, Watson. I saw no Bible. Would you call Whitaker's almanac a large? Yes, indeed. In that book will be found the message of the numbers. Mr. Holmes. Mrs. Pike. What did you write on that sheet of paper? A long shot in the dark, Watson. Was he a bit of news on it? Miss Forrester lives here, I believe. Tell her that Mr. Maribu wishes to see her. Mr. Thaddeus Maribu. And hurry. Mr. Maribu calling to see you, Miss. Miss Forrester. You're looking charming as ever. I see you receive my flowers. Thank you. I sent them to soften the unexpectedness of my visit. You come about the murder of Captain Pike? No. Have the police been pestering you? No. I was fortunate enough to keep your name out of it. Have you seen today's papers? Shocking, shocking. Poor old gentleman. This is a very wicked world we're living in, Miss Forrester. Uh, this will necessitate another meeting. That's why I came myself to tell you. Safer. Too many eavesdroppers. Busybodies concerning themselves with other people's business. The same time, the same place, tomorrow night. Oh, please don't ask me to go to that dreadful place again. Well, unfortunately, in this case, I'm a servant carrying out instructions. You've nothing to worry about. Not a thing. Not a thing in the world. Oh, this, this is my... Uh, Mr. Sanford, Mr. Meredith. Remember. I seem to see you every place. <clears throat> Who is that man? He's my lawyer. Oh. I remember seeing him the other night. But what's he doing here? Oh, please don't begin that all over again. But I mean, surely I have a right to know. Oh, John, I'm so miserable. It's something that concerns Father. Just before he died, he sent for me. I remember his words. On my death, you'll find yourself well provided for. You'll be rich. Remember this name. He repeated it twice. Mary do. Should he communicate with you, follow his instructions. For through him will come this inheritance. And the meeting three days ago? Began the fulfillment of Father's word. I think I'm beginning to understand. I thought I saw... Uh, looked like a tramp. How tall? Oh, quite tall. Could you keep Miss Forrest under observation without her knowing it? I don't understand. Is Eileen in danger? In great danger. You were wise in coming to see me. Should anything unforeseen occur, get in touch with me. Go to her. Remember, get in touch with me. I'm glad to see you in a more cheerful mood. We've done remarkably well. I'm pleased. I admit I could do with a little explanation. I too feel a little curious. 
I considered the claims of Whitaker's Almanac. As I suspected, the large number represented the page, the second, the small number, the column, and the other figures, the message. You'll find it decoded on the table. Meeting of Scarlet Ring, Tuesday, Nine House. Amy. Very due. Possibly. Tomorrow will appear in the personal column of the Daily Telegraph a second message, a request for information. Your message? My message. And the next step? The need of fresh air will take me in the country tomorrow. In the meantime, relaxation, music. I hope I won't bore you. Not if you make it soft. <laughs> Same as I say. That were a worry bad business about Captain Pike. A worry bad business. Same as I say. Hi, oh, yeah. tell us how the old range is going under the hammer. Lock, stock and barrel. Same as I say. I know I almost broke this old back of mine and weed in their old garden. And to look at it now, you'd think I'd spent all my time in here. Morning, sir. Morning. Morning, morning. How far is the grain from here? Some will tell you four miles and some will tell you five. But I say it's more than four and less than five. Is there any means of getting there besides walking? Bless your heart. Yes, sir. I've an old trap. I'll harness up old Caesar and old Willie. He'll drive you over. Yeah. Do you take anything to drink? Wouldn't come amiss. Scotch. Scotch and splash. Put a bottle on the table, some glasses, and a siphon of soda. Come in, sir, come in. Lord love us, it feels good to be busy again. You're a godsend to him, sir. He hasn't had a paying customer for a long time. Check <laughs> 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 uh, sir. A four, you can say Jack Robinson. Help yourself. Thank you, sir. Just a little drop, sir. Say when. Well, well, here's your very good Elsie. Ah, oh, I feel like a new man, sir. Well, and now uh, give the new man a drink. Right, Elsie. <laughs> <laughs> well, when? Here's your very good health again, sir. Good health. Were you born in these parts? I've never seen none of that. Worked for the Park family all me life. Till I got tired of working. Got this old backache from weeding that plaguey old garden. Then you would remember the late captain. And his father, and the old gentleman of all his father. See that dent? That belongs to Captain Park. A mark caused possibly by the imprint of a stone. And right you are, sir. Many a good-looking young master Robin got for chucking stones at me, sir. <laughs> Sounds as though the young man was somewhat wild. Wild? He was our only terror. Ready and waiting, sir. I find it's a full cedar and he's ready to go. You must tell me some more on the way over. Better bring the bottle. Try it, sir. Scotch is sure good for the backer. Steady, Caesar, steady. He's hard to handle when he's raring to go, sir. You were saying... You can't make English gentry out of the even Chinese know how. Not in these parts. Very difficult, I imagine. When the captain was alive, did he stay here often? Until last Tuesday, we ain't seen nothing on him till close nigh on to two years. <clears throat> Shall we uh, have one, sir? You take two. <laughs> right, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> 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 the old back 
feels better already, sir. <clears throat> Magic. There's the Grange now, sir. Looks at his servants there now. Well, not in what you might call real servants, sir. There's Darth Dolly, and where you might have to be to keep that place. I kept it for 30 years. Stop a moment. Well, Caesar. I may wish to buy it. I look it over. I look it over.
It's so kind of you to come. Knowing my late husband as intimately as you did, I felt I could turn to no better person to help me through this trying time. Well, you know, anything I can do. <laughs> you are very nervous today. Well, I can't help it. Look at my hands. You know, I'm, I'm trembling all over. <laughs> That'll stop the rattling at any rate. My late husband always spoke of you in the warmest terms. And you know the high regard in which I've always held you. Oh, have you? Can you doubt it? You are the only one who knows my husband's affairs. Everything has been left in the most terrible disorder. My house in the country will be sold. I wonder if you could spare the time. Yes? You could be my guest over the weekend. And we could go through his papers together. Well, you know, with pleasure. I could do with a bit of a change. We could drive down. Would tonight be possible? Tonight? No. You see, I've got an important meeting tonight. Then tomorrow. Tomorrow. May, may I make a little confession? You know, Mrs. Pike, I've always admired you tremendously. Where are the others? I'm the first one here. There's a rat among us. Yes, and he's facing me, seated on a chair. Tonight. Someone has given away the code. Anyone supplying information concerning the Scarlet Ring will be rewarded. Apply Sherlock Holmes, 221A Baker Street. It's one of us. That's certain. We can either go out of it. Can't be that dumb Chinaman. There remains you, myself, and Mary Jean. Well, it's not me. On my own. Or me, I swear it. Then it's... I thought that snake was double-crossing me. I... But it's getting on my nerves. Like to be a nightmare. First Murphy, then Pike, then Deary. Who'll be next? Suppose someone wants to supply information to Sherlock Holmes. Then it would all come out. No, no, Holmes is different from the police. He protects clients. Holmes works with the police. What's in the back of your mind? I want a fighting chance. I want to leave. This suspense is getting on my nerves. It's killing me. What suspense? Oh, well, pray be seated, gentlemen. I overheard your conversation. It's most illuminating. Yeah, we are not going on. No? And why not, Frank? I don't want to die like Murphy. Or be found dead like Pike. No, perhaps you'd like to spend the rest of your lives in prison. Hmm? No, my friends. Crime brought you together, and by crime, you will stick together. Gentlemen, in a few more days, the Scarlet Ring will cease to exist. We'll cease to exist, you mean? I have just received word from the agent in Antwerp. But the plunder has finally been disposed of. This time next week, the principal will be in my hands. A small, unimportant matter of some one million pounds to be divided equally among us. Two hundred thousand pounds apiece. Uh, Two hundred thousand pounds. And meanwhile? You waited for five years. What's the matter of a few days? Yeah, what guarantee is that we'll be alive to receive it? None. Of course, if it were a question of your life without the money, it might be arranged. How? Letter in the form of a deed of gift relinquishing your right to any benefits accruing to the society. And give up 200,000 pounds? It might ensure your life. I'd see a burn first. Shh. Not a word. Well, Miss Forrester, this is a pleasure. Come in. Won't you sit down? Uh, uh. And now to business. 
Miss Forrester and gentlemen, again I have the pleasure of presiding at this meeting. Hello? For one moment. A Mr. Stanford. Yes? Where? Thank heaven you come. I followed the heel and phoned you immediately. Uh, she went through the side door. strangers and a Chinaman. When it comes, it won't come from the sky. Oh, no, shut up, fool. I'm on fire. Life's worth more to me than money. Yours may be, mine isn't. We walk to the station together? No, no, you go ahead. It is extremely dangerous to run at your age and with your wit. Could I, could I have a glass of water, please? Sit down. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Oh, thank you. I must apologize for bursting in like this, Mr. Holmes. I'm Dr. Watson. I don't know when Mr. Holmes will be back. Please wait. Thank you. for a million pounds. The Chinaman are yet is devoted to his mistress. Doubtless a generous present will satisfy him. On account of Holmes, I cannot impress upon you too sufficiently the necessity for speed. 
Everything must be finished tomorrow night at the Grange. I will make all the arrangements. You've got to help me, Mr. Holmes. If you don't, I'm a doomed man. Not ten minutes ago, an attempt was made on my life. You see, I live in Ebony Street. I was on my way there. I was about to cross the road, and some instinct made me leap back. And as I did, a car, driven with terrific speed, and coming on the wrong side of the road, whizzed by me. How I escaped was a miracle. Did you by any chance see the occupant of the car? Yes. As it flashed by me, I caught a glimpse of the driver, a black-bearded man. Is there anyone who would benefit by your death? Yes, four persons. You see, Mr. Holmes, there's a, an estate to be settled up. And if I should go out, well, they'd get my share. Is any one of them capable of committing a crime? Yes, three of them. How much is your share of the estate? Two hundred thousand pounds. Naturally, you would wish to live to enjoy it. When were you in China last? I was never in China. Come, come, sir. Then the tattooing above the right wrist? Well, that, that was done in England. You must be mistaken. That particular yellow is to be found only in China. What made you come to me? Well, you see, Mr. Holmes, I... Well, I'd heard of your reputation. How did you know my address? Aren't you here in answer to my advertisement? Were you not returning from Limehouse? Are you not a member of the Scarlet Ring? Is it not a fact that three of your members have met with very sudden ends and you are terrified lest their fate befall you? Why, you must be the devil himself. Answer me. Yes, Mr. Holmes, but I'm helpless. I'm up against some power that no precaution can govern against. Go straight home and lock yourself in your house. But it's very old and easily broken into. You were cellar. Bomb proof. Hide there. On second thought, we'll see you to Ebridge Street. Take a revolver, Watson. Mr. Holmes, do you think there's any hope? Obey my instructions implicitly, and I can promise you almost a chance. Tomorrow, leave town. You see, Mr. Holmes, I had intended that. You see, I know a little place in the country. Very secluded, miles away from any place. It belongs to the widow of an acquaintance of mine. The lady is an Oriental, an Asiatic. As a matter of fact, she's Chinese, Mrs. Pike. When you arrive at the Grange near Superintendent, you'll probably be given the room next to the ladies. You'll find a door connecting the two rooms. Keep it locked. Arrive there neither before nor later than nine o'clock. On your arrival, pretend the head Pretend one? Oh, Mr. Holmes. Go straight to your room. If you value your life, you can open the door. Baker! I got him too. the last I've seen of him. A regular quirin, free with his money. Same as I say. He must have been the pickle when he was a lad. Dolly ran all the way to fetch Dr. Smallwood. And she and Smallwood now burst a blood vessel trying to get to him. And when they found him, he wasn't there. And there are you one of them ever set eyes on him again. Same as I say. Company. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Take anything to drink? Wouldn't come amiss. Scotch and splash. Scotch and splash. How did you know, sir? Thank you, sir. Give me your orders, gentlemen. Put a bottle on the table. Glasses, and siphon and soda. Right, sir. Gentlemen. Bottle of whiskey. Four glasses. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. All right. Hurry up, I've got a 
And what brings you gentlemen round these airports? This friend of mine belongs to the medical profession. A patient of his has escaped, an old gentleman of any dangerous character. That's the reason for all these wardens. An old gentleman? Wearing a cape? Stoops a bit? Big in the belly? You've seen him? Have I seen him? Yes, sir. The Dolly at the Grange seen him. And Dr. Smallwood ought to have seen him, but he never set eyes on him. As sure as I'm standing here, sir. He sat right there. It, it was the day before yesterday. Doctor, we're on the right set. Say when. When? Well, here's your very good answer. Another beer? Thank you very kindly, sir. Pay the bill, one. And take care, Mr. Come along. What do you have? Well, I'm here hoping that we get him. Who? Dash my buttons if I know. My mind has never been in such a fog. It's time to leave. Gregson should be there by now. We'll have the grain so well surrounded the cat couldn't get through without being seen. Come along, men. Mr. Holmes, something terrible has happened. Miss Forrester has disappeared. Disappeared? But I told you to guard her. But I couldn't understand your telegram. Telegram? What telegram? It's something to meet you at Dover. Are you mad? I, I don't know. I'm almost insane with worry. Go on. Well, I arrived at Dover and suspected it was a hoax. I turned to London immediately. Fortunately, I have a racing car. Arriving there, I went straight to Eileen's house. She's gone. I, a maid told me that she left in the early afternoon with a strange woman. A Chinese woman? Yes. I called you, but you left. When I gave my name to your housekeeper, she told me where I could locate you. Oh, Mr. Holmes, what could have happened? Or what could she be? Come, Miss Dray, there's not a moment to lose. Mr. Holmes is late. Are you sure you're not mistaken? I had written instructions to bring you here. You saw them. Perhaps the fog. I certainly be here. If not tonight, then tomorrow morning. Who's that? Strange. I seldom heard. and I'll choke the life out of you. Mr. Wilson, have you lost your reason? Tell him if he opens the door, he'll never lift over another. One to the left. Who is it? Tell him walk away. Telegram for Miss Forrester. I'll get it, sir. Miss Forrester herself? I'll give it to one lady to give to the other, sir. Thank you. Good night. Good night, sir. Will you let me go to her? Wait. I'll never do it again. What? Stand about all night without a flask. Look, Holmes. Over there. Drop your gun. Well, Inspector, I checked up an old point. No one could have slipped through. Good night, my dear. My bedroom is just across the corridor. If you should walk me for anything, don't hesitate to call me. Thank you. Good 
night. Good night. lost their bearings. Watch the front of the house. Come. Come. All right, you stay here. Thank you, sir. I thought you would never come. As I suspected. You were charged with the murders of James Murphy, Malcolm Deering, and William Baker. And this woman? As an accomplice. Take him away. I saw him kill. You saw him pretend to be killed. It was he who attacked you. He was shot. No shot broke that window. He broke it himself. But the blood. Animal blood on a sponge. Medidue, of course, was in on it. Mr. Holmes, there's a second man outside. Came the car. I thought it my duty to detain him. Bring him in. Well, 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 Mr. Holmes. This is indeed a surprise. What are you doing here? Well, surely a man has a right to visit his own house. I own the mortgage on this place. I've invited some friends down for the weekend to discuss some business. Won't do, me. Arrest him. Well, this is rather a high-handed procedure. What are the charges, Holmes? The gravest possible. That of being accessory to the murders of James Murphy, Malcolm Deering, and William Baker. With the attempted murder of Jabez Wilson and Miss Eileen Forrester. Hmm. Rather a tall indictment. 
I think you'd better have the bracelets. May I help you? I've more than enough it. I... Then who can tell? I said, who can tell? <laughs> This will mean promotion, Lestrade. I'm very grateful to you, Mr. Holmes. But how you did it beats me. Simple enough. Simple. Simple. By the examination of the footsteps in the garden of Mr. Deering's house, I'm probably certain of the murderer's description. You remember the ring. There was no mark to indicate that it had remained on that finger for a period of six years as stated by his mistress. His wife, you mean? Mistress Watson. Mistress. Well, you ought to know. And the scarlet ring. Perhaps you will remember the disappearance of the Mandarin's gems in China some years ago. Perfectly. To realize on gems of international repute would be a ticklish matter. Very. That had to be broken up piece by piece and then disposed of carefully and slowly. Exactly. The scarlet ring was formed by the instigators of the original crime to protect the receiving end. And what was Pike's motive? Greed. The last survivor would become the recipient of the entire booty. I think it will be found that Pike was the original ringleader. But Mr. Wilson could furnish us with an answer to that. Not one word. We shall never forget you, Mr. Holmes. Rather not, sir. You must invite me to the wedding. Perhaps you'll give me away. I appreciate the compliment, but I never give a lady away, except I'm professional. Come, doctor. They'll send you when they need you. 